Welcome to another edition of Saluki Mania. I'm uh, SIU writer Todd Hefferman, and with me, as always, except for last week, <laughs> is the sports editor of the Southern Illinoisan Les Winkler. Not to be confused with Mike Reese. Not to be confused with Mike Reese. But uh, we are here to talk about uh, some football, and uh, Salukis are playing number one North Dakota State. Uh, SIU was shut out of the rankings despite winning. Uh, over two top ten teams on the road and back-to-back weekends. But uh, Saluki's come in pretty confident, and uh, they've been running the ball and throwing the ball on everybody. Do they have a chance uh, to throw as well against the, the Bison, you think? I don't know if they'll have a chance to throw as well, but I, I see them as having a good chance to win this game. I mean, the Salukis have played the Bison as tough as anybody the last two years. Uh, North Dakota State is the two-time defending national champion, and the Salukis lost to them by six points on each occasion. Um, I'm looking this I'm looking forward more forward to this football game than any athletic event at SIU in the last five or six years. I, this this should be fun. Yeah, I read your column. I, it's homecoming at SIU. I, I'm I'm hoping they're going to get close to a sellout because not only is it homecoming and Bill Norwood is is the the, the chair of the homecoming parade. Uh, he was a former quarterback at SIU. A really great guy, and then the Bison typically bring two or three thousand people, even though it's a good haul uh, from Fargo to Carbondale. But uh, it should be a great game. This I think SIU's got a chip on their shoulder. They they got snub, snubbed by the polls again. Not only the press, you can blame us all you want. The coaches polled and put them in either, and they're they've been very close in all their games. They they they've been out of games we thought they were out of. They've come back to make it close. Some of them they've even won. Uh, and now they've gotten over that hump of winning that close game, and they showed an extreme amount of resiliency at Northern Iowa when they had that game one, did not do it in regulation, and in two plays they scored a touchdown and put it back on Northern Iowa. I think that's what they're going to do to the Bison too. And I, I just think they're so much better football team since Malcolm um, uh, Malcolm Agnew has emerged as the, the leading of the, the leader of the running back core. The Salukis now have a guy that they can give the ball to in in, in clutch situations, and they they know he's going to run hard. He's got that little element of quickness, and he's got enough size where you you don't always bring him down with an arm tackle. The first guy doesn't always get him down, and he's a determined runner. I really like the dimension that he's brought to this football team, and and to the offensive line deserves some props. Uh, I think they're playing. I think they're playing much better than they did earlier in the year. Uh, it's it's strange to see a, a running back after the last couple of years. It's strange to see a running back actually have a have a lane to run through. And yeah. uh, the, you know the running backs aren't having to do it all on their own this year. And that's and that's part of why Agnew is having the success he's having. And one of the reasons Corey's having his success too. I think this is that's the, one of the reasons I think they have a great shot is is they they're throwing the ball better than I've seen them throw since Lennon has been here. And you may not be able to run against the Bison. They're, they're a lot like SIU. They will try to take away the run first and foremost. And, and even even when SIU comes out in three wide receivers and one running back, they're still going to be looking at that running back bef- to get the football. But I think they've really shown some some great strides in the passing game. They have a lot of options with Michael Pruitt. We're not even talking as Michael Pruitt as the focal point of the offense anymore. Their, their running game is their focal point. And that really makes them a dangerous team, in my opinion. Well, certainly. I mean, and you know, they've got a couple guys. Lance has shown an ability to get a little deeper this year, and uh, Lacey McKinney has always been kind of a vertical threat. But what's allowing them to go vertical is that Corey Faulkner has time to sit in the pocket and and look for receivers downfield. That's made a big difference. But you know, the, the, you know, we keep talking about the offense, but the key is probably going to be on the other side of the football. Yeah. Uh, and the defense has uh, the defense has been one that has bent a lot this year, but they. They've given up some big plays, but the last couple of weeks, it seems like they're making the big plays when necessary. So, And they have, they've always played the run tough all year. Yeah, and I expect them to do that this weekend. That's a big part of the Bison's game is their running game. Their quarterback is a, is a four-year starter. He's inching close to the FCS all-time wins mark. Uh, really makes a, some great plays when they need him. Uh, but I do think SIU's 3-4 gives, gives the Bison a little bit of problems. Uh, they're, I think they're, they haven't scored on defense yet, and they're going to at some point this year. And, and they always play well at homecoming. I can't remember the last homecoming game they lost. So that, that'll be a challenge, but uh, kickoff is at 2 p.m. Weather's supposed to be pretty good, so uh, hope to see you there and, and enjoy the weekend. Thanks for joining us.